Hello and welcome to my lightning presentation on visibility and voice through grassroots awards in South Africa. My name is Munira Ramatula. I am the founder and chairperson of Footballing Girls, a nonprofit organization in South Africa which is extremely unapologetic and very intentional on the development of and empowerment of girls and women in sport in South Africa. I'm going to take you through a quick intro as to why the awards were started, when were the first awards, and also just um, why there was a need to expand. So the awards were founded in 2018, and they were founded based on the fact that I won a G-Sport Award in 2017, which was a national award for women in sports in South Africa. And I wanted to go back to my community and kind of use the feeling of recognition uh, to drive girls' sport development on the ground and also to kind of make sure that, you know, we create role models when it comes to girls, so that kind of addresses a few stereotypes as well, but also to you know, just celebrate the women at grassroots level and celebrate the young girls at grassroots level. The first awards took place in September 2018 in Ekuruleni, which was called the Ekuruleni Women in Sports Awards. We had about 105 nominations that had come through, but it was just such a beautiful feeling and also getting, you know, the community behind it and ensuring that they support this initiative of um, recognizing and celebrating women and girls' sport. In 2020, during the pandemic, we decided to expand the awards, um, you know, to other regions within Gauteng. Gauteng has five regions. Gauteng is a province in South Africa. And, um, you know, we then moved on to Johannesburg and West Strand. We launched that and we were ready to have just three award ceremonies. And then we were approached by the Tswane region to say, can we also include them and assist them? Uh, you know, in also bringing our concept and our awards through to the Tswane region to celebrate the women from that region. And um, yeah, so in 2020, we then had four awards, which was uh, Ekuruleni, West Rand, Johannesburg and Tswane. And then January 2021, we then hosted Sedibeng, which then now completed the five regions of uh, Gauteng, and in March 2021, we had the first Gauteng Women in Sports Awards. But I must say that the initial proposal was always for Gauteng Women in Sports Awards. It's just that our board members felt that, you know, we shouldn't buy off more than we can chew, and let's start off a little bit at a time, and then from there we could grow the awards. And uh, it took us, yeah, three, four years to get there, but yeah, we did get there. And then we've now hosted the second uh, Gauteng Women in Sports Awards in March 2022. Our awards focus basically on recognition and um, empowerment. When we say recognition, we're talking about rewarding and celebrating and creating role models in communities because we believe that young girls is, you know, would look up and find a better role model in somebody who comes from their very own community. And then the empowerment aspect, we look at the media exposure and education, and that is very key to driving our awards and to use that to create um, and drive girls sports development at grassroots level. So I'm going to take you through to recognition, and when we talk about recognition, um, our award structure or our adjudication structure for our awards is around three um, pillars, which is achievements uh, for the period under review, and then we look at uh, self-empowerment and we look at um, community development. When we look at self-empowerment, that whether you are a coach, an athlete, an administrator, or an organization that is driving girls' sports development at grassroots level and women in um, sport empowerment and development at grassroots level, um, how are you basically as an organization, are you offering women courses, training courses, workshops, uh, seminars where they could then empower themselves? And um, when it comes to coaches and administrators and athletes and technical officials, you know, how are you empowering yourself? Are you attending workshops, um, whether it's online, whether it's physical? Um, are you attending training courses? Are you bettering yourself? And then the last part being community development, irrespective of whether you are an Olympic medalist or a World Cup champion or whatever it is, your achievement, be it nationally and internationally, are you going back to your community and, you know, empowering your community to say, look, I'm an Olympic medalist, 
and I want to come and share my experiences. Are you going out there doing sanitary towels drives for girls? Um, are you then going to schools and giving speeches? You know, those are the kinds of things that, that we look at because we believe that we need to approach this quite holistically. And when I'm empowered and I can share my experiences, I'm literally basically empowering the next generation through my experiences and through my self-empowerment as well. But also moving with the culture of self-empowerment to say, look, it's important. And if I, as a gold medalist, can go out there and also still better myself, then so can you. We promote the culture of celebration uh, and acknowledgement at grassroots level, which is very key. You know, your achievements need to be celebrated. And when your achievements are celebrated and acknowledged, you want to do more, you push harder. And, um, you know, then girls look at that, young girls look at that, women in sport look at that and go, you know what? I can do more than what I'm doing, I can achieve, and I can also achieve my wildest dreams. And then looking at creating role models for girls and women involved in girls' sport development. When we look at creating role models, as I said earlier on, it's, you know, somebody who comes from my community living up the road from me, and she's a national team player, uh, or she's just come back from the Olympics, or she's just come back from the World Cup. For me, it says to me that she comes from my community, my environment, my similar circumstances, and she's achieved so much. So I can do that too. So that also encourages and empowers the young girls. When we look at the empowerment aspect, we're looking at um, media exposure. I mean, you know, with our awards, we have a, a huge media plan that we use and it also focuses a lot on community media, your community radio stations, your community print and digital media, um, also looking at uh, radio and television from a provincial and from a national level, that's also key and that's very important, you know, be it announcing the finalists, be it announcing the winners, you know, through our press releases and also in social media because it also kind of gives exposure and awareness of the different sporting codes that exist within um, different communities and at grassroots level. We do individual media interviews through our partner Vision View Sports Radio where our finalists from all the district or the regional awards um, are then interviewed on Vision View whether they've been on radio, whether they've not been on radio, it really doesn't matter but that's also our way of empowering them and teaching them how to conduct themselves in media interviews. We also have our own show in Digimag Boat called Spotlight on Women in Sport, where we interview our finalists and give them opportunities to tell their stories, be it as a cover girl in the Digimag or a feature um, on the show on Spotlight on Women in Sport, which is on Vision View TV. Um, you know, just giving opportunities of exposure, of being visible, of women telling their stories. I mean, our Digimag also covers stories around the world, events around the world when it comes to women in sport, whether it was the first boxing match at Madison Square Gardens, uh, you know, for women, whether it is the equal pay discussions that are taking place around the world, but also achievements, who's breaking world records, who's not, you know, uh, what more can be done. And it's very important because then we are exposing, um, you know, grassroots level to a bigger world that exists out there. And then from there, we also have our educational aspect, which is then the workshops, you know, we, um, and I developed a personal branding course for women in sport to teach them how to build their personal brands, how to conduct themselves in media, um, interviews, how to conduct themselves on their social media, and how to just basically build their own personal brand so that they would be able to attract sponsors and partners, which could be quite lucrative from a financial perspective for them. Uh, we also have the leadership skills training for women in sport, which is a CETA accredited, and that looks at our finalists from our administration uh, administrator of the year category and volunteer of the year category. We look at those and then we bring them in and we give them the CETA accredited training course, obviously through partners because it is a very expensive course as well um, based on the fact that it is accredited. But also for them to be able to go back and say, this is what I am learning so that I can be a better executive member, I can run my club better, I can run my organization better, and I can work on more programs for girls and women in sport within my district, within my region, and within my community. Thank you very much for joining me and just a quick discussion on the Women in Sports Awards that uh, Footballing Girls hosts across the province to kind of drive girls sport development um, and, and the empowerment of women in sport, you know, to kind of change the landscape and drive uh, 
so that we are able to have different results and better results and we're not always sitting and complaining about the same things but it's always the simplest things that we can do to drive voice and um, visibility you know for girls sports for women in sport and continuously create that awareness around girls sport around uh, women in sport and create opportunities around it thank you